Over a year ago, I did a video on my 35mm Patekop projector, wondering what its origins were. The short answer is, no one knows. Even the Jérôme Sedou Paté Foundation in Paris had never heard of 35mm variants of the Patekop, nor were they able to find anything in their archives about them. Currently, there are four known 35mm Patekoks. Number 306 in the Film Museum Düsseldorf, Germany. Number 12 in the Technical Museum Stockholm, Sweden. Along with another one with an unknown serial number. And of course, number 10, featured in this video. However, through the magic of buying one of each, we are now able to compare the 35 and 28mm versions in detail and create some hypotheses based upon circumstantial evidence and our very small sample size. Without even the experts from the Sedou Pathé Foundation being able to dig up additional and most of all official information, I guess this is the best we can do. While the two models look similar, they share almost no parts. Only the rewind mechanism and the large drive pulley for the generator are exchangeable. And most likely also the lamp housing. Though I couldn't directly compare it to a large 28mm lantern yet. While the 28mm generator generates 6 volts, the 35mm version has 12 volts. There is no indication of which one came before the other. The most obvious differences are the size of the shutter mechanism housing and the frame itself. The 35mm frame allows for slightly larger reels and therefore at least as much runtime as the 28mm version. The boom extending from the crank to the upper reel rises immediately on the 35mm projector, whereas on the 28mm version it goes horizontal for a bit. There is also a noticeable bulge to accommodate the 35mm doorstop. These are the two most recognizable differences, apart from the larger shutter mechanism housing. And they were the features I was looking for when I was combing the internet for other 35mm projectors. My 28mm projector has serial number 344 and is therefore also an early one. Both projectors have serial numbers on numerous parts, much more so than later units, some of which seem to have just one serial number on the front. Let's start with number 10, which has the serial number on the front and the back of the shutter mechanism housing, and also numerous times on the crank handle. Apart from the number on top of the frame, there are additional serial numbers on the drive shaft, and gears. The different number on this cover is interesting, because on the inside it's number 10 again. Also on the gear wheel, and finally the door. Different numbers can be found on this bracket and the generator. Number 344 has 344 only on the shutter mechanism housing and the top of the frame. Everywhere else it's just 44 like on this bracket, the big drive wheel and inside its cover, also on the drive shaft itself and its mountings. Another 44 on the front gear wheel, its cover and behind the door. Again, a different number on the generator. There are so many 44s that this cannot be a coincidence. But what does it mean? With far over 10,000 units built, it makes no sense to just use the last two digits on parts, and they have certainly expected to build more than 100, even a 1,000 units. Neither the 35mm nor the 28mm projector are prototypes. They look far too refined. They may be from a pilot series, though, checking if production works and to iron out remaining problems. Yet, still no need for so many serial numbers that aren't even on parts that are stressed. Although, stressed is a big word for the intended operation. The projectors would probably survive if you threw them down a flight of stairs. So, was it a form of pride? Numbering could have increased the perceived value, but hiding numbers on the inside seems a bit counterproductive. They seem to have stopped doing that after a couple of hundred units and only left the number on the front. Maybe just to save a buck. 
there are rather large and inexplicable differences in the mechanics. At first glance, there only seem to be some bearings in different places. But when you look at the drive gear, the 35mm version is noticeably more complicated, but the only difference is that the 35mm drive shaft spins twice as fast as the 28mm one. And I don't know what for. The 35mm shutter rotates at the same rate again as the 28mm one, and it has no additional blades either. 35mm projector flickers just as bad as the 28mm one. While the 28mm shutter sits in front of the gear wheel, the 35mm shutter sits behind. Notice the shutters moving at the same speed, while the 35mm drive shaft spins faster. At the same distance to the screen, the projected 35mm image is almost four times the area compared to the 28mm image. The 35mm projector has an extra feature. See the labels FIX and CINE? When you crank backwards, clutches disengage, the film is no longer advanced, but the generator is still driven. This results in a still frame to be shown. Cranking forward again resumes normal playback. Reverse cranking a 28mm projector will turn the sprocket wheel backwards, but the intermittent mechanism still transports the film forward, which may result in rip perforation. While 35mm and 28mm Patekok projectors look similar, they are two completely separate products, sharing almost no parts. The most interesting question of who came first, unfortunately, still cannot be answered. The highest 35mm serial number is 306 in the Film Museum Düsseldorf. But I know of no confirmed sightings of 28mm projectors with serial numbers smaller than my 344. This means we do not know whether the serial numbers overlap and 28 and 35mm projectors with the same serial number exist. However, if there were projectors with the same serial number, it would still tell us nothing. Because the 35mm projector still could have been manufactured before, during or after the 28mm run. So has there been some technology transfer from one to the other? That's impossible to say. None of the differences make one product better than the other, except the larger lamp housing. It was available for 28mm Patrick Cox later on, but again, this doesn't tell us anything, because it could have previously existed as a 35mm only item. From 1919 on, Patti also entered educational cinema, selling 35mm projectors to educational institutions and the prints were on safety film. A portable projector with still frame functionality attached to a well-known brand name makes sense in that regard. What wouldn't make sense is the complicated re-engineering of the 35mm projector. With 28mm, they had a proven concept that doesn't look like it would buckle under daily use. Also, reintroducing all the serial numbering seems really unnecessary. It would be interesting to see the prints on the base plate though. My 35mm projector base plate shows a 28mm sprocket wheel. I can't be sure, however, that the base plate is the original one. At least one of the Swedish projectors has still prints on its base plate, but the photos do not show the relevant parts. If the 35mm version came first, it surely wouldn't have had a 28mm sprocket wheel printed on its base plate. Currently, we don't know and cannot deduce what an original base plate looked like. While there is no obvious technology transfer, the 28mm projector looks like a streamlined version of the 35mm one. Unnecessary features like still frames were removed and material use was minimized. Just look at the base of the frame, and maybe the smaller 28mm lantern also resulted from it. Mechanics were simplified as well, but clearly they were still thinking that all those serial numbers were a good idea. Because there was no safety film before 1912, the 35mm projector must have been intended for professional customers only. Customers who knew that you could easily burn down an entire neighborhood using nitrate film. That means that the 35mm Patekok would have been available through separate distribution channels, making sure that only people could buy them who knew what they were doing. 
Consumer protection wasn't a thing in 1912, so nobody would have thought twice about using a brand name synonymous for home use for a device that is anything but, or the other way around. My very personal opinion is that the idea of the 35mm version came first and that during development it became apparent that such a projector would be ideal for the yet non-existing home cinema market, just not in 35mm. Therefore 28mm was created. The design was streamlined for mass manufacturing and the price conscious consumer market. And the rest is history. That would also mean that either the 35mm version was available before the 28mm projectors, because you don't just establish large-scale safety film production in a couple of weeks, or that the adoption of safety film by Patti Frere had been going on all along and could now conveniently also be used for home cinema. In my opinion, the inexplicably complex drivetrain of the 35mm projector makes it very unlikely to have been developed alongside or after the 28mm version. Also, why start doing this again? While all that may sound reasonable and logical, I am of course heavily biased and not necessarily well informed. All we can be sure of is that the 35mm Patikok was either a failure or was deprecated quickly in order to reassign equipment and manpower to the much more profitable 28mm product line. I can't think of any other reason that makes 35mm pate cocks not just rare, but properly unknown to the community and even the pate archives. It is, however, a beautiful construction. Where the 28mm version is just that little bit off, the 35mm pate cock looks more compact, sturdy and well-proportioned. The design never gets old.